Good morning. It's a beautiful day up here on the farm. And we are starting Saturday morning on our frames to mount onto our greenhouse. A lot of people have been asking. I've kind of eluded out there that we have a greenhouse we're putting in. And about two months ago, um, I got crazy and I said, you know what? I want a greenhouse. We love the market. We're doing a lot. Uh, I want to also expand out into some propagation. We had done some work with the local school a while back to help get them started uh, with their greenhouse. And I decided to go ahead and get my own. So we purchased the Planta Sun Grow 26 foot, 10 feet wide, 26 feet long. Great group of guys up in Canada were super great. I called them and talked to them. I'm going to put a link up here to their website. Uh, they're fantastic. They were really good about answering some questions for me that I had in relation to um, shade because we are in a very hot and humid area. Um, they have some shade cloths that you can use. We also uh, talked a lot about the vented windows, the automatic vented windows, but I didn't know what size I needed. And uh, a good buddy of mine that I was talking to, you know, that, that also has, he has a hoop house. He was talking to me about uh, doing a greenhouse. And when I told him I was only thinking about going 16, he said, <laughs> you're going to outgrow that in a matter of, you know, one season. So I turned around and I bought the 26 foot. So I think the biggest thing that you have to know about uh, building a greenhouse is the foundation. I guess that's with any structure. I'm not a builder, but I went a little bit overkill on the, um, on the foundation. But then once I started building, I thought I really haven't gone overkill because it's solid and I'm not going to have to worry about it. I had to take a couple of factors in place. Number one, I am six foot. The greenhouse at its top is about a little bit over eight feet and it has a bar I'll talk about. Um, and that bar is going to not allow me to have the head space that I want. Yes, I could get in there. Yes, I could walk around and all of that, but I could see me reaching up, being the idiot I am and hitting a pole or doing all that. And I also wanna have some hanging baskets in there that can be utilized long-term. So that's a big one for me as well. So that's what we're working on. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about the foundation, what I'm doing. Um, I'm also gonna cover a little bit with the uh, PVC tube that we put up and running the electrical wire so that we could have exactly what we wanted. Here are a couple of the things I was talking about with the six by sixes and the two by sixes. As I want to show you here, you're probably going to say this is a little high off the ground. Okay, so the greenhouse at the peak is going to come up to eight feet. Okay, so the peak is going to be like this. I'll show you a little bit later in the video, but there's a bar that crosses and that bar is going to be great because it's going to allow me to hang some hanging pots or uh, run my lights. But if it's eight feet, I'm 6'1", and then that bar is there, and you're going to drop about, I don't know, I think it's about 9 inches. I'm only looking at about this much room underneath, okay, which is fine. I'm a tall guy, so I, I understand that, but I, I bought some LED lights that are on a string that are going to hang down a little bit um, for um, efficiency with energy, and so I couldn't really find anything that was tight up to the top that would still bring it down. So I went ahead and I decided just to put in the six by sixes, which is what they recommend, and also the two by six. Now here's the whole reasoning behind that. The six by six is a 16 foot and a 12 foot. Now a buddy of mine that's a builder, I said the other day, he said, you know, why did you seam them the way you did? Um, I don't have the capability of hauling a 26 foot six by six. I mean, for God's sake, how much would that thing weigh? We live in the middle of nowhere, so to haul a 26 foot six by six an hour and a half, it's a no-brainer, it doesn't make any sense. So I went down to uh, Lowe's, I got a 16 foot six by six, actually two of them, one for each side, and then I got a 12 foot, and here's why. When I measured out the 10 foot, uh, some of the 10 foot six by sixes were as much as that much off. And so I didn't want to make it exactly 26 and get back and be two inches off. So I went ahead and did that. Um, another thing that I did was I put down the crush and run. So the crush and run, I did not want to get into the dirt. And the reason I didn't want to get into the dirt and really mess it up was I'd seen some reviews where people had done that, then it settled. And I did not want to, as I said, I didn't want to dig down to build up. I wanted to just start off. So I did a lot of research. You guys know in my videos, I research a lot. I had a guy bring in some crush and run 
and I actually hauled it up here and I just put a straight line one foot tall and I did a string line with a level on all four sides and I just built it up okay so I made sure that there were about eight inches um, all the way uh, from the gravel as I built up from the string and that allowed me to be able to slide in my two by my six by sixes and do that so Planta tells you in a conversation when I call them that you can be off a little Okay, a little but not on the width So as the as the greenhouse comes down It's going to lip right here and actually overlap here and overlap here Okay, and you're gonna mount the door is gonna be here. You'll see that in the continuing videos so what I wanted to make sure was that I didn't cut this particular beam short and team these up. I wanted to get an exact precise cut on this six by six. And this is a 12 foot six by six that I cut down to 10 feet. Again, you can't take the, you know, the little bit of a variance with that. So I used a skill saw and just cut it. And then I used a hand saw. I was really probably overkill with making sure that it was exactly where it needed to be on the front and the back. So this is a good height up. You can see where I'm at now. Now that I've stepped in here, you know, I've got an additional six or eight inches that I'm gonna be able to work in here, okay? That means I'm gonna have more height up here. And yes, I'll have to step over. That's not a big deal for me. And I actually will build up around the rock to make it more stable. But the crush and run, I put it down, I tamped it down. And then I sprayed it with the water hose and just kind of let it settle. I went back and leveled it again. I went back and leveled it again. What I did was you got your string level, you put your crush and run, you tamp it, and then you measure and make sure of the height. I'm sure everybody knows how to do that. So after I did that, and it, once the crush and run was tamped down well, I came up, I cut my six by six, 10 foot. I screwed a six by a two by six, 10 foot on the bottom to give it a little bit more. The main reason I did that it's down here on the end when you get to that 16 foot spot and then you've got to put your other 10 foot down at the other end you have to have something that's going to seam it up at the bottom so that it doesn't move i've seen people put the aluminum plates and stuff on it's a greenhouse i worried long term humidity and all of that if it could affect it and really aesthetically i don't like it so i went ahead and i put the six by sixes in Here's what I'm talking about with the six by six. Here's a good shot. You can see where I did the two by six underneath and I'm gonna seam these up. So see where it's long. And then you can see where I butted this up to the precise board that I mentioned they, meant they did. That way there's no worries of it butting up and me having to measure this and all of that. It's right perfect with the long one. Okay, so right down here, this is the 16 foot. You come down to right here, and here's where I seamed up the two six by sixes. And this is the beauty of the two by six, is it's screwed in and lag bolted in from the bottom. But you can see, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's bad. That does not look like two boards that have been seamed for a guy that's never done this before. So it's very level. That's the 16 foot piece, and then here is the 10 foot. Now. A couple things I want to show you that make a difference too. I went ahead and bought these and I put them in every corner of the spot as well. Might be overkill, I don't know because I have these in, I lag bolted them in. Make sure you get galvanized um, because uh, you're going to be in a greenhouse. Now, I also, there's a granddaddy long lid, I also lag bolted these into that. The problem that you run into with that is down here and i have a milwaukee impact driver um i'm sure someone's gonna say milwaukee's not good it's always done good for me but see that i couldn't get it in any farther so i'm gonna probably have to cut that off but this makes it as a reinforcement another thing you're gonna look at i want to look at too and We'll cover this a little bit later is I ran all of my conduit uh, as far as my PVC thick walled there's Lucy and my wiring up from our pool house I wanted to bring it up here and go ahead and have it ready I don't want to be digging underneath this so I wrenched rented a trencher and I came all the way up 
and I ran the wire and the, and the uh, PVC at the same time. Again, I used three quarter inch PVC thick walled. This is the exact center of the greenhouse. I put a T section here. I have one water line going over there that I might put in later. But I ran this one over here. Let's see if I can get out of the thing. And I ran it over here. I will be putting a receptacle right here on a four by four. And then I'll be also bringing up the um, PVC as well. So if you've seen my videos um, on my manure tea and things like that, my game plan is gonna be able to be, to come straight up through here. There's the commode I'll use and I'll come right up through here and I will stop and I'll have two barrels here outside of the greenhouse. I'll have a receptacle that I can run my PVC, or excuse me, that I can run my aquarium pump that will go into the uh, tanks for the manure tea, and I'll have my um, uh, water there as well, okay? I also got a little crazy, and I went ahead and ran a ditch all the way over, okay? I went ahead and just stopped that, I mean, I know someone out there is gonna say, ah, I can't have too many water spigots. One there, one there, one there is not necessary. And down here, there's, hey Lucy, down there is going to be another door. So I didn't wanna worry about that. If I can't get enough water from here, then I'll just dig up the pipe that I've already put in and it's just buried right here. I'll just dig it up and put another one. But I think this is gonna be enough. I'm not planning on doing much on this side. So I hope this helps with the foundation. I know I covered a little bit about the wiring and the PVC tube as well, but you really, 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 really need to get all of that in and just have it laying in there before you put in your foundation. In my research, I had more than one person say that they had not thought about that and they had to go back and, and dig underneath. And when you're doing that, you're messing with the foundation and you're really messing yourself up. You're making more work. It's possible.